Hey everyone, in this week's lesson, we're going to look at Genesis chapter 11 and cover the story of the Tower of Babel. Um, but I want to make the point that God preserves his purposes for humanity despite human rebellion. So God preserves his purposes. Since the beginning of scripture, God has always had a plan and a purpose. Um, and he's going to continue to work out his plan and purpose all throughout scripture. But we need to know that God preserves his purposes for humanity despite our rebellion. And periodically, as we study through scripture, we're going to learn these different essential doctrines, these truths of, of the faith. And one of which is sin as rebellion. Because the Bible portrays people as responsible beings, called to respond in faith and obedience to God's revelation, truths in scripture, the Bible often portrays sin in terms of defiance and rebellion to God the King. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 2 is one of the many passages that describe sin in terms of rebellion against God. And it says, I have raised children and brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. Seen in this light, sin is personal and willful disobedience. The raising of a clenched fist toward the one who made us. Um, and I like to kind of think of like a clenched fist being like something that you do when you're angry or you're saying, you know, forget you, I got a better plan. Um, and it's really quite opposite of having an open hand to go in for a handshake in um, like a greeting or an agreement. Uh, so kind of that idea of like raising a clenched fist to God is this really this idea of rebellion. Like, I got it, I got my own way, I got my own thing. So this essential doctrine of sin as rebellion, and we'll talk more about it as we look at the scripture. So um, I'll encourage you, our first scripture, uh, if you want to look it up, is Genesis chapter 10. We are going to go to Genesis chapter 10, the, ver the last verse, verse 32, and then into chapter 11, 1 through 4. These are the clans of the sons of Noah, according to their genealogies in their nations. And from these nations spread abroad on the earth after the flood. So prior to this verse, we can see Noah is being fruitful and multiplying and the world is growing again. Chapter 11, verse 1. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had bricks for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top up in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your scripture. Thank you for the truth that it is. Father, help us to continue to learn and grow in you, knowing that you have a plan that will prevail. And that, Father, uh, when we recognize that sin is rebellion, um, that ultimately our hearts are closed off and we have a clenched fist to you. I pray, Father, that in that reality, we would um, rebel from that thinking and have an open hand to you and want to walk with you. So thank you for your word now. May it come alive to us. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope that some of this was reminiscent or reminded you of what we learned in Genesis chapter 4. If you want to re, uh, go back in some of the past lessons, unit 2, lesson 2, we saw where the story of Cain and Abel, and we saw how sin spreads when we respond in anger, sin spreads when we respond in comparison, sin spreads when we respond in pride. In all in all, kind of this story of the Tower of Babel, yep, I know for a lot of us we've probably heard this story, maybe some haven't. Um, but essentially, the people after the flood, the, the society is growing. They're growing in their ability and their technologies. And they have decided to build for themselves a name. And um, so building this tower that reached to the heavens, I think of that tower in Dubai and how they were probably setting a goal to do something like that. Um, but all in all, point number one here is pride leads us to rebel against God's commands. And we can see this uh, for the people working as one. Um, it was no longer about God, but it was about them and their ego and their pride. 
And so we can see this correlating right back to Genesis chapter 4, where Cain and his family built a city for themselves. And ultimately, that part of the story um, gets more and more tragic. And ultimately, to getting to a place where God had to go to Noah and say, hey, I need you to build an ark because I'm going to destroy everything. The sin is so rampant. People's hearts are so far from me. So pride leads us to rebel against God. And uh, the wording here in verse 4, it says, Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its tops in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves. This idea of let us make a name for ourselves is reminiscent of the divine dialogue that we see in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, when God created mankind. When we are filled with pride, we forget our place. The sin of pride places us as the individual at the center of our worlds instead of God being at the center. With God removed from his rightful place in our thinking, we begin to justify our sin or what we want. And it's no wonder why the Bible says, um, and then looking at Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18, it says that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. So right here in the beginning, like in, in this chapter, in, verse, in chapter 11, 1 through 4, we see that pride can lead us to rebel against what God has for us. And this is something that hopefully we can avoid and choose to do better at, but um, reminding us that God preserves his purposes for humanity despite our human rebellion. Moving on, I want to continue in this chapter, um, chapter 11, verse 5, and we'll go through verse 9. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one, they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they purpose to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they may, so they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of the earth, and they left off and they left off building the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel, because the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of the earth. So point number two for us in this lesson is that God's grace prevents us from ruining his plan. And I think that this is such an important thing for us to learn from these first nine verses uh, of chapter 11. We can see that pride leads us to rebel against God's commands. But also in this part of the story is that uh, God prevents us from ruining his plan. Grace has given us something that we do not deserve. Humanity deserved judgment in this moment. Again, punishment because people's hearts were going away from God. At the very, very least, um, it deserved to continue uh, down a destructive path of sin. One of the most fearful things in all consideration that, we can, that, that God can do to us is to let us go down a path of, uh, of sin un, un, like uninhibited and to reap the consequence of our own sin uh, and our rebellion. But here, God did not do that. He intervened for people. He thwarted their plans. And by doing so, he restored his own plans. So by him just messing up the plans of all the people, um, he was showing his grace. This was a gracious thing for sure. To bring the plans of the wicked to nothing and to restore God's good plans for humanity. So all praise and glory be to God. Pride leads us to rebel against God's commands, but God also, his, his grace prevents us from ruining his plans. And at the very least, and lastly, um, for everybody that can hear my voice, I want to go to Isaiah chapter 65. Because there's more hope in all of this. In Isaiah chapter 65, verses 1 and 2, we see this. I was ready to be sought by those who did not ask for me. I was ready to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that was not called by my name. I spread out my hands all the day to a rebellious people. 
who walk in a way that is not good following their own devices. What is so awesome is that God is showing us that God preserves his purpose for humanity despite our rebellion. The point number three that we see in this part of scripture is that God invites us to return to him, even when we are super rebellious. Isaiah says, to the, Isra says the Israelites did not do what was good because they followed their own thoughts. We see that in verse two. We are told all the time to follow our heart, but this is a dangerous thing for us as people. After the flood, God warned that the intention of man's heart was evil from his youth, as seen in Genesis chapter 8, verse 21. Following your heart will take you down a path of rebellion. Rebellion ultimately leads us to sin. We need to follow the heart of God by obeying him at his word. So all in all, just looking at these scriptures, um, it's so cool that we can see that God's purpose for humanity, um, that God preserves his purposes for humanity despite human rebellion. We can see that pride can lead us to rebel against God's commands, but God's grace prevents us from ruining his plan. And God invites us always to return to him for his glory. So I hope that these scriptures will continue to settle in your heart, that God will continue to speak to you through the reading of his word. And as we continue to work through scripture, I hope each and every one of you are blessed and that you continue to grow in him.